Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are doing another example or practice problem for drawing shear force diagrams and banding moment diagrams. In this case, we've got an overhanging beam with two point loads on it, and I promise you this is going to be a treat. All right, so let's go. <laughs> um, so we're going to see in this video that we're going to get something funky with the deflected shape uh, that we haven't seen yet in previous videos. But uh, before we get there, we want to do the free body diagram here. I want to figure out what the reaction there is at A and B, and it turns out that B is 50 kilonewtons and A is 10 kilonewtons. And the next thing that we do is we set up our shear force diagram and bending moment diagram with some grid lines here that are going to be at our points of interest. So basically in this problem, it's going to be at our, uh, our reaction there and our applied point loads. Cool. So we can start drawing our free body diagram. Uh, starting from the left hand side and taking our virtual cut uh, just to the right or in this case really just anywhere in this region because it will be the same no matter where we go. So we know that we're going to have 10 kilonewtons pressing up from the reaction at A and then we'll have some internal shear force pressing down. Again we're only drawing the vertical forces here we don't we don't have to draw on the moments uh, in this free body diagram uh, when we're just looking for the shear force uh, as we go along. So. 10 units up, or 10 kilonewtons up, that means we're gonna to have to have 10 kilonewtons pressing down, where we have an internal shear force pressing down to the right of a virtual cut, that's positive sense. So we are starting out here at positive 10 kilonewtons. And like I said, in anywhere in this region, it's going to be the same because there's no distributed load here. So that 10 is just gonna shoot straight across and we're gonna get uh, 10 kilonewtons of shear, positive 10 kilonewtons of shear everywhere in this region. When we extend the free body diagram to go just to the right of this point load, then we're going to have to include that point load on here. And that's going to be another 40 kilonewtons pressing down. So we now have the free body diagram going from A just to the right of this. So we have 10 going up, 40 going down. That means that we have to have 30 kilonewtons going up for uh, the sum of forces here to cancel out. Uh, and where we have this going up, that's opposite the positive sign convention, so that's going to be minus, and that's the magnitude of 30. So it's going to drop us down here to minus 30 uh, kilonewtons, and that is going to be the shear, the internal shear that we have in this entire region of the beam, right like that. And we'll just line it up. Boom. All right. Uh, now, when we draw our shear force diagram, or when we update our Ben. Uh, can't talk. <laughs> when we update our free body diagram to go from A all the way just to the right of point B here, we're going to have to include this 50 kilonewtons going up on our diagram. So we update it going from A just to the right of B. We add on that 50. So now we have 60 kilonewtons going up, 40 going down. So we're going to have to have 20 going down. That's uh, down to the right of a virtual cut. So that's a, uh, that's a sign of positive. So we're going to come up here to positive 20 kilonewtons. Okay, so we're gonna connect those. Boom, just like that. And that's gonna shoot straight across because there's no distributed load in this section. Um, and then the one thing that we wanna do is we wanna check that, yeah, we're saying here that our shear is ending at positive 20 kilonewtons. We wanna check that with a free body diagram of the right-hand side of the beam with a virtual cut just to the left of it. So that will be 20 going down. The internal shear will have to be 20 going up. And that is the positive sense where we have an internal shear force going up to the left of a virtual cut. Then uh, that's 20 and uh, that's positive 20. So we're happy we've done this correctly. All right, so now we want to move on to the bending moment diagram. Um, this beam here does not have any fixed rigid connections at its ends. So it is going to start with a bending moment an internal bending moment of zero at each end. So it's going to start with zero there and it's going to finish at zero here. Now what we want to do is we want to take the area of the shear force diagram as our change in magnitude in the bending moment diagram and where that area is positive that change will go towards the positive side of the bending moment diagram. Where the area is negative that change in area will go towards the negative side in the bending moment diagram. And as always where we're getting horizontal lines here on the shear force diagram that's going to result in linear changes in the bending moment diagram. Okay so when we take the area here uh, it's pretty simple it's just two meters times 10 kilonewtons, that's going to give us uh, 20 kilonewton meters. So we're going to go from zero, change of magnitude is 20 kilonewton meters, and uh, it's towards the positive side because that area is positive. So we're going to come up here to, let's say that's about maybe positive 20 kilonewton meters, and we're going to connect those with a straight line. Okay, when we look at this region in here, the area is just two meters times negative 30 kilonewton meters. 
and we're starting times negative 30 kilonewtons. That's going to give us a total area of 60 kilonewton meters. This area is on the negative side, so that change is going to be towards a negative axis. So we're going to have to go 20 minus 60. That's going to bring us down to minus 40 kilonewton meters. And again, it's a horizontal line, so we're getting that nice straight linear change between those two areas. All right, and then lastly, we take the area of this last section. It's just base times height, 2 meters times 20 kilonewtons. That's going to give us a total area of 40 kilonewton meters. And that's a nice linear change. From negative 40, this is the positive side, so it's going to push our graph towards the positive side uh, as we go from left to right. So that's going to bring us from minus 40, change of uh, positive 40 right back to 0. All right, so now the next thing that we want to do is we want to draw the deflected shape. So the original structure looked like this. And we have been saying that if you're drawing your bending moment diagrams with positive bending on the top of the axis like this or above the axis, then the deflected shape can loosely be sort of inferred uh, very roughly as the inverse of this. So the deflected shape would be like something that comes down and then something that goes up and then comes back down again, very roughly. When I take a look at this very rough image, I'm seeing something with a concave side pointing up and a concave side pointing down. And it turns out that where a bending moment diagram crosses the axis here, that we're getting an inflection point on our deflected structure. So that means that we need to know exactly what is this distance here. Um, and we can really simply find that out by uh, doing similar triangles. So if we have this small triangle and then this large triangle here, we can compare those and figure out what the base is just by going this the, the vertical side here is just uh, the, the big triangles vertical side is 60 and its horizontal distance here is 2 and then so we can just compare the vertical side here for the little triangle it's just going to be 20 and we'll call this distance x so that's just equal to 20 over x so just cross multiply 2 times 20 divided by 60 we're going to find that x here is going to be equal to 0 0.667 meters. So that means that at a distance of um, 2.667 meters, so if we come out here, right, because we have to add in this distance here, which was 2 plus the 0 0.667, so 2.667. At this point, there's going to be an inflection point in our deflected structure. And then when we think about how to make this work, um, we had, uh, we, when we talked about this coming down, going up, and then going down like this, we can see here that when we're applying this load, it's going to bend down just a little bit like that. And then the curvature, again, it's going to, we're not getting a change in curvature, so it's going to be coming, same thing, concave down out until this point here. And then this is where we get our inflection point. We can even just draw this on like that, and then the, the, the curvature has to be opposite to this, and so we'll have concave up, and uh, basically it's going to look like this. So it'll be curving down, and, and then right here is going to be our inflection point, where we're seeing that change in curvature. So there you go. You can see that, again, it was basically, it's a very roughly follows the inverse of that. If you live in a country where you draw a bending moment diagram with a positive bending moment on the bottom of the axis, then your bending moment will just be the mirror image of this. And in that case, you can use your bending moment diagram basically as a rough guide to what your deflected shape will sort of look like. But otherwise, uh, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. And in these types of problems where you have a bending moment diagram crossing the axis, just remember that that is going to be an inflection point on your deflected shape.